Hello all. Welcome to today's Heart to Home devotional. Let's go before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this time of gathering that we all get to be here and, and learn your word and what lessons you have in store for us. Father God, we just ask that it be your Holy Spirit that speaks this morning and um, that we all might be able to take something from this, apply it to our lives, and uh, just be better uh, represent representatives for you, Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today, I would like to share with you a phrase um, a friend said, during, said to me during an exchange of texts. This phrase, uh, more specifically the word, provoked me to want to understand the definition of that word and that phrase. Uh, and I'd also like to share what God revealed to me um, in that definition and some scriptures to go along with it. So a friend of mine recently had used the phrase, stay anchored. And this phrase, again, like I said, more specifically the word anchor seemed to be printed on my heart and it really spoke to me. So I wanted to share with you uh, what I found in this. According to Britannica, anchor is defined as a device, usually of metal, attached to a ship or a boat by a cable or chain and lowered to the seabed to hold the vessel in a particular place by means of a fluke or pointed projection that digs into the sea bottom. I really like how being anchored in Christ um, is such an important principle we all should adhere to uh, more in our lives. Uh, but more interestingly, how the definition and the word itself anchor can be related to the Trinity. And what I mean by that is a ship or a boat, we can look at that as God the Father. Uh, the anchor can be looked, as, looked at as God the Son. Uh, the cable or chain can be looked at as God the Spirit. And just for the purpose of what I want to share with you, the seabed can be the world that we live in. So a ship in an emergency will drop anchor to reduce the speed of the ship as quickly as possible to help prevent any forthcoming mishap. Now I want you to imagine a ship, but this ship is God the Father. And this ship is sailing around and over the seabed, or in this analogy, the earth we live in. Now from the surface of the sea, God can see his people's mishaps and forthcoming mishaps, AKA sins. So he drops anchor and the anchor here is Jesus Christ. Uh, we are told in Romans three verses 23 through 26, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus now God with his son Jesus can offer salvation by grace through faith because all are sinners and fall short of God's glory but now all are justified through faith in Jesus. What a great God we have, amen? For dropping that anchor, right? What is also neat here is the chain can be seen as the Holy Spirit. It is the connection to God, the Father, we all have through Jesus Christ's work. Uh, we are also told in John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15, however, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he bears, or I'm sorry, whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So why is it important to stay anchored in Christ? He can train us, he can guide us, he can direct us. His word is our sword against the enemy and his knowledge keeps us in God's will. We are told in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
Staying anchored in Christ will also build our witness. And I really cannot think of a better reason in our current world than that. And here are a few reasons why. We live in a world with a very worldly view of God. Many people live in sin, but they, they still love God. Uh, but these people have an image of God created by the enemy. And this image is intended to allow people to continue living in their sin, uh, but still believe that they have salvation when in fact they, they do not. We also live in a world full of non-believers. Our witness are the seeds God can later water when the season is ripe. The word tells us to pick up our cross and follow Jesus and also to make disciples of all nations. Um, if you simply log on to social media, you will see there all the propaganda of the enemy intended to separate man from God. People fighting all the time and differences of opinion. Those are opportunities that the enemy is going to use to separate us from God. Um, a couple things I would like to leave you with before we close out here. First, if we are not anchored in Christ, then we are anchored in this world. And that will destroy both our salvation and our witness. Secondly, I want to leave you with a few questions. Are you fully anchored in Christ? Do you find yourself swaying between the world and the word? And what can we do to be better anchored in Christ? I say take these requests to God, lay them at his feet, and see what, re what he reveals to you through the Holy Spirit. Let us close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this message, and we all just want to be better representatives of you, Father God. Uh, so we just ask that your Holy Spirit find those opportunities for us to find a, way, a better way to be anchored in Christ uh, so that we may go out into this world, be witnesses for you, Father God, and bring all the glory to you. And we pray for this in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.